Hi guys, I got the long jacket on as you can see because it is winter and it is still cold. But let's get right to the video. In this video, I'm going to be talking why about why Djokovic's dominance and mass success on tennis is not simply due to his mental strength or his mental fortitude, but it is in fact the physical things he's capable of and his abilities on the tennis court. Yes, I'm sure his mental uh, strength has played a major factor into his success on the tennis court, especially being able to stay on, on the top of his game year after year and achieve such great heights in tennis, including now 378 weeks, number one on the tour, 22 grand slams, at least two at each event, and probably most impressively at all, two, at, two Masters 1000s at each of the nine uh, Masters 1000 tournaments. So Djokovic has, has achieved incredible heights in tennis, pretty much unprecedented success. And I think it's largely credited to his strong mentality that he's just mentally tougher than the other players on the tour. This is not simply the case. I believe Djokovic's dominance is due to the fact that he can do things on the court that other players simply cannot do. Djokovic is strong in so many different areas, so many, almost so many rather contrasting areas on the court that he is just such a, a strong and such a dangerous player, such a complete player in so many different ways. Most people, when they approach tennis, it's either I'm good at one thing or I'm good at another thing and I need to try to play as many points as possible in that fashion. But Djokovic has, is, is a player not just of no weaknesses, as he's recently um, had, had the reputation of achieving, but now he is a player of seemingly infinite strengths. Not only is he one of the best returners on the tour, but he is one of the best servers on the tour. He has one of the most effective and most hard to return first serves, and he can pretty much always pull it up in key moments. And Djokovic has long been known as one of the best defensive players, one of the toughest players to hit winners on, one of the best movers on the court. Well, now he has a ton of offense and he can hurt you if he gets a short ball and he gets a chance to rip out on his forehand. Not only is he one of the best backhands all time, being able to stay cross more consistent than any player and being able to switch down the line on a tough shot better than any other player, but his forehand is now an incredible weapon. He can be consistent with it. He can hit sharp angle with it. He can go flat down the, the line with it. There's pretty much no shot he can't play. He's a great baseliner coupled with a great slice and a great sh drop shot. He has incredible feel on the court. He is not, not like there, there are, are a lot of players who can grind like Djokovic, but they do not have the same ability to mix up with the slice or mix in a drop shot at any, at any given moment. And there's players who hit great shots from the baseline, but they are not as good at the net as Djokovic. Djokovic can take very tough volleys and redirect it into the ideal position, hit deep, hit penetrating volleys, or he can drop it on a dime and just kill the pace off the shot. Um, and Djokovic, so Djokovic is so good in so many different areas, and that gives him the ability to play shots that are high percentage of hit for him, but are actually low percentage shots for other players. Most players, they have strict confines of what they are good at and what they are not good at, and they have to play tune, uh, play points to that tune, to that style of point, to, to that style of play in order to be successful. But Djokovic can take shots that are bad shot selections, that are low percentage plays for most players on the, on the tour, but they are in fact successful player, plays for him. For example, someone hits a deep, heavy ball to his backhand, he can slap it down the line for a winner. That is by all means a poor tactic. That is a low shot percent, uh, percentage shot for 99% of players. That is in fact a high percent shot for Djokovic. So he can take a high risk, high reward shot basically without the risk. He can play it um, a very difficult, high rewarding shot and he's able to be successful with it enough times in order to be effective. He can take a screaming serve and redirect it flat down the line on return and he can be effective with it. He can make it at a high percentage rate while still being an extremely dangerous shot against the opponent. He can hit a drop shot from pretty much anywhere on the court. If he can even touch the ball, whether it's on the stretch, whether it's on full slide, he can pass an opponent when he comes to the net. Djokovic's ability to play shots way out wide on his forehand, way out wide on his backhand, and put it in the absolute perfect location is a testament to the things he's physically able to do on the court. To me, that's not simply um, 
due, due to his mental strength, you can't will yourself or can't mentally want it enough to be able to hit those shots. Djokovic can take balls from such bad positions on the court, from f such poor defensive positions, and hit incredibly offensive uh, shots. I believe from pretty much any ball he receives on the court, no matter what kind of shot it is, no matter where he is, he has the ability to do pretty much anything he wants with the ball, whether that's rip, rip a ball down the line on the full stretch, whether that's receiving a fast, deep ball and pull off a drop shot, whether that's come to the net and play a volley from his feet and drop it uh, right on the other side of the net. He just has so many different abilities on the court and he can hit such a wide array of shots and such offensive shots from such unlikely positions that it gives him a tremendous advantage over the other players. And he is so strong in so many different areas that there are pretty much no patterns of play that are consistently effective against Djokovic. It is very hard to beat him from the baseline, but even if you do manage to beat him from the baseline, he can pull off clutch serves in key moments. And he can hit a drop shot if he's not feeling very well good in the rally. If you try to attack Djokovic, he's extremely good on the stretch. He's extremely good at chasing down balls. And if he can touch the ball, even if it's on full stretch, he is very dangerous with his passing shot. So there's pretty much no time where you're not under pressure against Djokovic. And there's pretty much no place you can put him on the court where he's not dangerous and he can't come up with a great shot. So this is my opinion why his success is not simply due to his mental strength, but is in fact due to the abilities and the, um, and the attributes he can produce, the shots he can produce on court, and the things he is physically capable of that give him such a strong and definitive advantage over the other players of the tour. And that is what I believe is the key to his dominance. Do you believe it is simply Djokovic's mental strength and mental toughness that, abil that gives him the ability to be so dominant over the other players um, and achieve such incredible heights? Or do you think there are physical capabilities and skill sets in his game that give him such a tremendous advantage? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.